ghouls disturb you. I'll see you soon. to get you, Barbara. Hey, what's up, guys? This is Josh from Nightmare on Woodsboro Lake. Today, I am joined by a very special guest. I have Mr. Dave Kerr, uh, director of Bloody Summer Camp, along with some other films, uh, such as Go Away uh, and The Curse of the Slasher Nurse. Yeah, yeah, that that was uh that's our original film, first film we ever did, and we're currently remaking that uh, as the slasher nurse. Nice. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I I watched your film uh, Bloody Summer Camp and really 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 enjoyed it. So I I wanted to just like sit down, pick your brain a little bit, and and chat horror with you today. Yeah, man, sounds good. We love. Uh... We love getting to talk to people that that uh, enjoy bloody some camp. Hell yeah! Um, so, what what first uh, sparked your interest in horror? Um, uh, so, uh, um, a lot of people ask. Uh, well, I've I've heard questions a lot of times. People ask, you know, what was the first horror movie you've ever seen? Uh-huh. And uh, I don't. I have no idea. Like I, I, I can remember horror films from as far back as I can remember. I remember uh, Friday the Thirteenth, Nightmare on Elm Street. You know, I remember seeing them a long time ago. I couldn't tell you what the first horror film was or any of that. So it's just kind of like that's been kind of something that I've known about my uh, the entire life that I can remember. And of course, I grew up. Uh, you know, I was born in the 80s, so, you know, during my young childhood, a lot of the movies that were popular around that time was, you know, the 80s slashers, you know, the Friday 13th and Halloween and stuff like that. So that's why uh, my favorite, like, subgenre of horror will always be, like, the slasher films, because that's kind of, that's the nostalgia that, that brings joy to me, is those kinds of films. Heck, yeah. Yeah, I... I know my two of my favorite franchises are uh, Friday the Thirteenth and and Scream. Um, yeah. You know, I was a '90s baby, um, and I remember like growing up, like the first time I I used to avoid the horror section when I was a little kid because <laughs> I thought like the covers were real were, were creepy as a kid. And then my aunt was like, "Here, watch this," and she put on like Leprechaun and. Uh, <laughs> And child's play and i was like mortified but it just like all i don't know like after that something clicked and i was like man i have to keep watching these movies and i pretty soon i was like all about horror all the time and uh yeah. i thank her for it even though at the time it scared the shit out of me <laughs> yeah horror films is horror is always going to be a different uh different kind of film from other genres because the horror it's 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 almost like a like a a ride you know i mean you've got so many elements that that you know you got the scare factor you got the gore factor you got the comedy you know um there's so much to appreciate in horror films and you you don't watch horror films um not that they can't have them but you don't watch them because it's a really good story You know, you watch them because it entertains you on so many levels, you know, being scared and and having your emotions and your and your, you know, your senses uh, messed with, you know, from from jump scares and and the suspense build up. It it takes your, you know, raises your adrenaline. It's like I said, it's kind of like a a ride versus like a, a drama or even a comedy can only do only really has the laugh factor. Um, I think that's why horror it just has its, its own, you know, its own following because people, they recognize, they know that that's, that that's the reason that horror is special because it does so much for you when you watch it. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, <clears throat> you know, and I was, I was going to ask 
what what led to the idea of Bloody Summer Camp? And I'm I'm sure because you mentioned earlier your love of '80s slashers, it it fits right into right into that niche. <laughs> yeah, um, I was uh, I was self taught filmmaker. Um, it's it, it still surprises me how I got into it because it wasn't like I went into it to be making films. Um, we, it, what started as a music video turned into a short film, turned into a full length film, uh, Curse of the Slash and Earth. And that film was literally me Googling and, and trying to take a crash course on how to make a film and just doing it. And it's not great, but I mean, we did make a full length film with no experience at all. And uh, from there, we, uh, after the first one, you know, when I was making the first one, I didn't have any expectations to make a second one. Mm -hmm. But when I finally finished it, I thought about all the things that I did wrong, that I learned from, that I, man, if I did this, if I had to did this, or now I know not to do that. I thought about all the things that, that I learned along the way. And then I'm like, man, I bet I can make a way better movie now because I know what to do. And so I, I kind of like, I, I kind of want to do it again. You know, I want to, I want to do it again now. Cause I want to, now that I made a film, I want to make a better film. And, um, I originally didn't want to make a sequel to curse of slash nurse. I wanted to make another film called cabin run. Uh, but I was convinced by other people to make a sequel. And I didn't have, I didn't necessarily disagree with that because of the fact that, I kind of felt like it was kind of a soft reboot almost in a sense because I knew I wasn't happy with the quality of the first one. Um, kind of like the Jason films. Okay, it's a sequel, but I want to write it to where you don't necessarily have to watch the first one to enjoy the second one. And so we we made the second one, and it was way better. It was definitely a lot better than Curse. But it was still a no-budget film. We didn't have a budget. And we were just using free locations. We were using people you know, who had no acting experience. And so after the second one, I was just like, all right, I'm either going to take a, like a break from filmmaking, either like take a year off and not do it, because it takes a long time from start to finish, because I do everything from writing, directing, editing, you know. Uh, so I'm, I'm there the whole way through. It's like a year process. And mm -hmm. so I was like, I'm either going to take a break or or I'm going to make the movie that I want to make. Not a movie that, that's based on what we can get with nothing. I was like, I want if I'm going to make another movie, I want to crowdfund for a budget mm -hmm. and make a camp slasher film from the 80s. That was like, a, that was my dream film to make was a you know an 80 slasher film that took place at summer camp and honestly i didn't i didn't think that we would make raise the money i didn't think i was going to be able to find a summer camp i didn't think i was gonna be able to afford a summer camp i didn't think we'd raise the money i ended up finding a summer camp it ended up being affordable and we ended up raising the money and so at that point i was like well fuck i guess i gotta make the movie now <laughs> and uh and we we did we we made the movie that i'd always wanted to make Hell yeah. Well, I'm glad you did. I really, really enjoyed it. Like I said before, um, I've only seen it once. I need to watch it again. Um, yeah, I, I totally have a mad respect for the independent filmmakers out there that are doing it on their own. Um, I actually got like the unique chance to like work on the set of like an independent film and what an experience. I mean, um, I, I helped out on the, I don't know if you've ever heard of never hike alone. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Vincent DeSanti. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I helped on the second one. Um, cause they shot some of it out here in Washington and I had interviewed him on my channel and he's like, Hey, why don't you come down to work for me this summer? I was like, sounds great. Like, where do I sign up <laughs> for that? You know? <laughs> and, yeah. uh, it was such an experience and I, you know, I met one of my favorite final dudes, uh, Tom Matthews and man, he was, he was pretty rad. I, I felt like a fulfillment in my life after that. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, Tom, Tom is a great guy. He uh, we, we filmed with him last year, and he's amazing. Heck yeah. Yeah, he yeah. uh he was he's uh he plays Chuck in our film Go Away. Um and uh yeah, filming with him, man, he's just a super laid back guy, super cool dude. Uh he absolutely loved the script for Go Away, which it was an honor for me to hear Tom Matthews, you know, praise my script. Um Heck yeah. So yeah. We almost got him uh to come have a little cameo in the slash nurse and he was gonna he was gonna come to the premiere go away and we were gonna film a, a a small little cameo with him but um never hike alone to the uh some of the filming dates conflicted with him being able to come so unfortunately he, he couldn't make it but he wanted to come to the premiere premiere he can't wait to see the uh see go away so awesome yeah yeah, that's that's really that's really cool. Um, so I've I've just got you know different questions to try to mix it up a little bit. Um, what would you say is the most gruesome death you've ever seen in a horror film that you can recollect? Okay. Um, it's it would probably be. The flaying. Uh, you ever seen Martyrs? Mm, I'm not sure. Any any time someone gets skinned alive, that is up there on one of the worst deaths. Yeah. Um, so probably that. <laughs> yeah, no that that's that's always gnarly for sure. Yeah, I can yeah. I go with that. Um. What would you what would you say would be the worst way to die? Oh, probably I bet you it's would it be skinned alive. <laughs> that no, that would be the most painful. Uh the worst way to die to me would be buried alive. Oh, a hundred percent. I hate yeah. It's just it's a it's not a quick death. You 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 know what's happening and it's almost like falling from a really tall building. You have time to comprehend what's happening and time to dread it. You know, it's just um, any death that takes a long time is going to be, you know, the worst of the worst. Right. I know that's the one thing I've or like one of the one thing, the few things that I'm like, I never want to drown and I never want to be like, I never want to suffocate. <laughs> so being buried alive. Yeah. Oh, hell no. <laughs> Especially being in like a dark place too, where you can't see anything, you know yeah. you're running out of oxygen. Hell no. <laughs> um, do you have a favorite memory from from working on the set of Bloody Summer Camp? Uh, yeah. Um, I mean there were there were a bunch. You know, um, just being at that at that camp was was had a lot of amazing experiences, especially working with people that we work with, we still work with a lot of them because they're just really good people. And, um, and we get along with them. We actually become friends with them. Uh, but I really enjoyed, and I really enjoyed the, the, uh, the day that we had Felissa Rose and uh, Dave Sheridan on set, just because uh, Dave Sheridan is a hilarious uh, um Ad libber, he ad libs a lot. He, he improvises a lot, and he had the entire cast cracking up because he he was coming up with these lines on the spot, and uh, and Felissa was trying so hard to fucking keep a straight face, and he kept making her laugh, and she kept she kept uh, yelling at him because he was making her break character. Uh, those two on set. Those two on set are it's it's that they're a handful because they're just so fucking funny. But uh, man, it, uh, it was it was really a really fun time having them both on set at the same time. Heck yeah, that yeah that would be cool to meet them both um, and work with them. Um, yeah, that yeah, sounds both like them, a fun time. Both of them su super laid back. Um, yeah, they they were a lot of fun to work with. Very nice, very nice. Um, 
If you could work with one director, living or deceased, who would you want to work with? Um, I mean, I hate to get, I hate to get, uh, uh, kind of obvious here, but I'm, I'd love to work with John Gardner. Um, I don't I mean, that. <laughs> not just horror films, but his action films, uh, Escape from New York. I mean, mm-hmm. come on, you know, he, he's got amazing visions for film. Oh, yeah. And his his, mu- his music too. And I'd I'd love to see uh, him do his music live because I love his scores as well. Yeah, he's kind of like a he's like he's got the whole the whole package going on for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to work with him in any facet: director, producer, score, you know, musical composer, any of that. Hell yeah, good choice. Um, I know for me it would be uh. George A. Romero. Oh yeah, yeah. Or uh, or Wes Craven, of course. <laughs> yeah, Wes Craven is also up there. I mean, he's uh, that was that was sucky to miss it. I really like the Mangler. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, that's was... a, that's a not not as uh no, not as favorable uh, Robert England movie, but uh, you know, I know Nightmare Nightmare on Elm Street. Is the big one, but uh, Robert England's been a lot of really good films as well. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, I love Robert England. Um, hmm, okay, uh, what would you say is the most underrated film of all time, in your opinion? It could be any genre, it doesn't have to be horror. Yeah, uh, of all. all I don't know if it's of all time. To me, it's to me, it's uh, uh, it's incredibly underrated. Um, there, there are plenty of others, but the one that when you bring that up, the one that comes to mind is actually one of my favorite horror films, which is uh, Behind the Mask: The Rise of Leslie Vernon. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. I, I actually, when I met Robert England, I actually got him to sign. His, I didn't get him to sign anything. Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. I got him to sign a. The before the mask uh, comic book, and uh, it was already signed by Nathan Basil and the director Scott Glossman. Um, and Robert England, he he looked at it for like five minutes. He said it was the first time he'd ever signed one, and uh, actually he said it's first time he'd ever seen it in person. He knew about them, but he had never seen them. And um, but man, be- behind the mask. Uh, they tried to come up with a sequel uh, back in 2012. They had a crowdfunder to try to raise the money for it, and they didn't raise enough. And to me, that was one of the biggest heartbreaks because I, I supported that crowdfunder, and I was really hoping that you know that it was going to get made because I, I love Leslie Vernon. You know, I think that's a really underrated film. Heck yeah, I, I really enjoyed like the whole aspect of like them following around this killer and like he's showing him like all the tropes and like how like he gets from one place to the nut to another. It was just, it was a fun time, like the whole way around. So yeah. I yeah. It's super, it. super creative because he showed you know, rather than all the things that go wrong in horror movies, it shows that he actually rigged everything, you know, the brick yeah. accidentally coming out from the, from the, uh, from the door. He had a string and he pulled it. It was just really clever how they did it. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I'm gonna. Ha- I've been talking to Nathan about coming on the channel. Um, we're working on it. One of these days to get him on. Um, yeah, I I really enjoyed that film. So yeah, that's that's a good choice. Very good choice. Yeah. Um, can you? So thinking way back, do you remember your first nightmare? If you ever had one, uh, I, I mean, I, I, first one, no, but I mean, I remember, oh, I remember nightmares from when I was a kid. Um, so one of them involved Chucky in a, uh, I was in a, in an IGA, if you know what that is. Oh, a, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was a supermarket. I was in an IGA and Chucky was chasing me around the IGA. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't remember, to be honest, I don't remember my first one, but, uh, 
had a lot of them <laughs> for sure. Oh. Um, yeah, I think when you, I think when you're a kid, I think your mind goes all over the place. Right. Just imagine the worst things and like everything, like at night, all the shadows, everything in your room, like you just it fuels it. So, um, yeah. So working on 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 bloody summer camp. Did you have like a like a particular scene that you enjoyed the most um, once it was all shot and done? Yeah, I think um, I actually I kind of had two. Uh, one was a, a kind of a happy accident. Um, <laughs> there, the scene where uh, her name's uh, Gretchen, but in the film her name's Felicia. Um, she's being chased by Devil Face, and it's in slow motion. Mm. Um, that scene was actually uh, it was kind of an accident that it ended up being in slow motion. Um, a setting had gotten changed on the camera and uh, didn't realize at the time that it was filming in slow motion. And oh. when I went uh. back, yeah, when I went back and saw it, I thought I absolutely loved it. I thought it added a element of um, dread to that scene because you know how when bad things happen, it seems like it takes forever. And uh, when I, when my composer uh, for Bloody Summer Camp, Adam Robertson, uh, when he added that score to it, to me, it just, it brought it all together. And it, it made me absolutely fall in love with that scene because that score to me just complements that whole thing perfectly. And uh, like I said, happy accident, because I don't know how that scene would have went, went if we had a, uh, filmed it in, uh, in you know, normal speed. Yeah. And uh, then the second one, my favorite one, is uh, the machete throwing scene. I actually really enjoyed that. We came up, uh, I came up with the idea. I saw a couple movies that inspired me. Um, I don't know if you've heard of a uh, scare package. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in that scene, there's a scene where they throw, throw a, uh, a hatchet. And it's going through the air. I don't remember if it's going at the camera. Or with, I think it's coming at the camera. But rather than actually moving like a real machete uh, hatchet would, it's almost like it's floating in the air because it's going just straight like this. And I was mm-hmm. like, you know, that would be that would be really cool to do uh, if it was actually you know spinning through the air. And um, yeah, natural natural born killers did a similar scene where there's a knife throwing scene where. They throw a knife and it, it goes flying it's flying through the air and spinning. I wanted to do something like that. So uh, I, I came up with this really simple rig with our uh, machete. It's almost like a bicycle thing where when you do this, it spins the machete. And uh, we had uh, our two actresses, Shonda and Kay, we had them run like they were in slow motion. It was actually in real time. But to go with the speed of the machete, they actually were running like they were in slow motion. And uh, I, th- I thought the scene turned out amazing. You know, you, you see him throw the machete and then the machete is slowly going towards uh, towards them. And uh, that's that's probably my favorite scene in the whole movie. Hell yeah. I, uh, I really enjoyed the scene with the cook <laughs> being, <laughs> yeah. being killed and then decapitated into the pot. Um, yeah. Just how he's like, he's like, you know, getting off and he's like, <laughs> like, doesn't even care what's going on around him. He's like, even if someone's behind him, he's just like, I'm going to finish, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> that was a good one. Um, yeah, that was, uh, there was a buddy, Christian, he, Christian Jensen, um, man, he, he's really funny. Um, <laughs> I think it was his, I think it was his idea to be bare ass in that scene. <laughs> um, we just, we, we really wanted to make the cook just despicable and he absolutely loved being able to make that come to life. He just wanted to be the, the worst type of person. Oh yeah. He he nailed it. I, I really enjoyed the, the diverse like cast you had going on and like how each character was like so unique, I, you know, and it, like, and a lot of them were like, you felt like those were total characters in any 80s like horror movie it just yeah. everything 
so well. The atmosphere, the characters, you know, everything about it just screamed the 80s. You, you know, if you didn't know better, you would think, yeah. Yeah, doing an 80s movie, um, you know, now when whenever I write characters, I try not to be so um, stereotypical with like, you know, the jock or the... Uh, the jock or the uh you know the stoner i try not to be like cartoony with the characters but if you're making an 80s slasher film you kind of have to because that's part of the whole thing is that they have these really over the top you know characters you got the meathead you know you got the uh the geeky characters and um that's just one of the elements that that uh that made 80s movies 80s you know so we we really wanted to make sure that we stayed true to that stuff and tried to at least check off the boxes that made it feel like an actual 80s film for sure um so i have another question here for you um if you had to survive the night against any like one of the big like horror characters like you know if you had to choose between like jason or leatherface or pinhead or freddy krueger hell even even the your your character the devil <laughs> uh yeah i think you would stand the the best chance against if you had to survive the night who do i think i'd stand the best chance against okay um i'm gonna rule out uh pinhead because anything supernatural, I'm probably screwed. Uh, same, <laughs> same, same for Freddy. Because I'm a, I'm a fall asleep, and that's gonna be the end of it. Um, Jason is supernatural, and uh, probably Leatherface or Devilface, someone who's who's human. Okay. Because um, because you might. I feel like I'd have a better chance to get someone who's human uh, because they can make mistakes and that they don't have the superpower thing, you know? Um, even Michael Myers, depending on which version of him, kind of dabbles into the superhuman area. Uh, actually, but you didn't say it, but if anyone, it'd probably be Chucky because I still don't believe that... I still don't believe that, that a, a doll can do all the things that they they try to make that thing do <laughs> right right well and i was gonna say to be fair if you went with like the earlier jason like like before he became like this supernatural zombie jason i mean you might stand a chance against like the you know the one from like the second or jason from like the, the third movie yeah part two part two is definitely possible and I could probably kick the shit out of the Jason kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Um, but yeah, after Jason comes back to life, I think that's, uh, I think we're in trouble. Right. Yeah. He's just a juggernaut after that. There's no, yeah. no stopping it. <laughs> nice. Um, <clears throat> let me see here. Okay. So I, I, I was going to ask, you know, what, you know, what is next for you? I know you mentioned that you're, uh, you're working on, on a film. Um, did you want to talk a little more about that? I mean, without spoiling anything? Yeah. Uh, well, just touch base on, on one, one thing. Our, our film go away. Uh, that is finished now. That is, uh, that should be, um, going out to backers soon that actually is playing at uh houston horror film fest oh, nice. in august and we've actually been nominated for four uh categories two uh of our actresses one is felissa rose and our lead christine oswald are up for best actress uh, my wife is up for best special effects and i'm up for best script so um that's right yeah, we're really just found out about that today. We're really excited about that and go away. Uh, through distribution, we're hoping it'll be out by the end of the year. Um, oh, yeah. But currently, 
currently we are in the middle of filming uh, The Slash Nurse. Uh, the Slash Nurse, as we were talking about before, my first film was Curse Slash Nurse. It was a no-budget film. Uh, we've come a long way since then. And so um, my wife and my other producers, they, uh, they convinced me they want to remake it because they want to... Uh, it's you know it's a female slasher. It's basically like you know you got Jason, you got Michael, you got Leatherface, you got all these badass masked male slashers. But and you got female killers. You got legends like Felissa Rose's character in, in uh, Sleepaway Camp. But you don't really have like a masked badass female slasher um, outside of like strange strangers or stuff like that. So. Sure. Um, that was their original idea for Curse and Slash Nurse, and they they really liked the idea. They felt like she didn't really get a fair shake because of you know it was a no budget film. Um, yeah. So we're remaking it, and uh, this is this is the actual mask for the film. This is the Slash Nurse mask. Oh, nice! Oh um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We we actually broke uh, fifty six thousand dollars on our crowdfunding so far. So it's yeah. it's gotten a a hell of a reception. We got Felissa Rose back in in the film. Uh, we got Brian Bremer from uh, Pumpkinhead and uh, Society. Uh, Beverly Randolph from Return of the Living Dead. Uh, Jim Crutt from uh, uh, Dawn of the Dead, and um, uh, Darcy the Mail Girl from uh, Joe Bob. Uh, they're all in the film. And uh, we're about halfway through filming right now. Um, I'm actually filming. Uh, basically like five days straight uh, starting Sunday. Um, but we're really excited about it. Like I said, it's a badass female slasher. You know, it's uh, the story is about a a, uh, a lot, of, kind of like similar to a lot of, a lot of uh, stories. A prank gone wrong. Uh, a bunch of teenagers ca uh, cause a prank where someone ends up dead and a girl ends up uh, institutionalized. And uh, about 15 years later, she breaks out hellbent on revenge. Hell yeah. Yeah. I'm stoked. <laughs> Sold. We are. Yeah, we're, man, we're really excited about it. Uh, like I say, the, the support has been overwhelming. And, uh, you know, we've been busting our ass filming this thing. We're hoping to be done filming by the end of September. And I'm going to try really hard to have a trailer out by Halloween. Oh yeah, I can't wait to see it. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, um, well that's awesome. I I wish you guys all the best. Uh, can't wait to see what you guys put out. Um, if you guys haven't checked out Bloody Summer Camp, uh, I believe it's available still on Tubi. Yeah. Is it on any other streaming platforms that you know of? Yeah. Yeah, it's on Amazon Prime, uh, it's on uh, iTunes, uh, Vudu, Google Play, all the, it's on, on uh, oh. Xfinity, <laughs> all the major ones. Disney Plus, no, I'm just kidding. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, Dis no Disney, no Netflix, but yeah, all the, all the other ones. Hell yeah, no, that's awesome. I'm, I'm glad it's, it's out there for everyone to see on so many different, different platforms. Um, yeah. Definitely. Go check it out if you haven't seen it before. Um, Dave, I, I thank you so much for, for hanging out with me for a little bit and talking and taking time out of your busy schedule to just talk some shit with me. So, <laughs> Yeah, man, I, I love talking horror movies, and I love uh, letting people know about what we're up to and what we got coming up. So I appreciate you having me on the, on the show, and I'm glad that you like Bloody Summer Camp. Thank you. I, yeah. So I a, a ton. I need to go watch it again. Like I said, I've seen it one time and I enjoyed it. I need to go watch it again. I hell, I might even do that tonight. Um, uh, um, but uh, for all you viewers out there, uh, thanks for tuning in as always. Keep killing it out there, my friends, and just remember, don't get caught. <laughs>